So I have a client who was pregnant. Um, I think her child's now like nine months old. She has wonky hip stuff when she squats and deadlifts. She's like super um, externally rotated with her femurs and it just doesn't look comfortable. She doesn't Mm -hmm. have any pain with it, but uh, she can't go that low with depth. And I've kind of regressed her from a hinge to a um, hip thrust instead of trying to focus on the deadlift for now. I'm just going back to a hinge. That looks okay. She can feel hamstrings and glutes there. But I was curious if you've had experience with ladies who were pregnant or Mm -hmm. um, have had children and they still have some weird hip limitations or issues. Right. So, so there's a couple of things that that you want to take into consideration here. Um, What is this her first child? That's it's her first. And she just had a miscarriage a few, uh, like a week or two ago, but it was a super early pregnancy. So I don't think that affected much. Okay. Okay. Um, depending on how long she was pregnant the second time, however, you're going to have some hormonal stuff that, that may be involved. So the first trimester, the, the relaxin circulation is very high. And so that's the stuff that makes ligaments a little bit looser and allows more mobility in the pelvis. So just an FYI on that, that happens in the first 14 weeks of pregnancy. So again, if she just miscarried, um, depending on how long she was pregnant, that, that may uh, promote some of what you're seeing. Um, now, the thing you have to kind of consider is what orientation would her pelvis be in, especially having, you know, had a baby not too long ago. And so in most cases, depending on how, how big a person she is, you're going to have a, a certain type of pelvic orientation that goes along the pregnancy. So as the baby moves forward, she has to make postural adjustments. And again, the pelvis will alter its orientation in response to changes in, in the, the body's response to gravity. So you could have an orientation that actually points the hip sockets in, in a retroverted position, which would be a little bit more posterior and a little bit more down. So hang on a second. I do have a pelvis, so I will, I will pick it up here and show you. So depending on orientation, so if, if, if nothing from a relationship standpoint changed within the, the pelvis itself, she's at least going to, to orient herself forward simply because of the, the weight shift forward. Now, in most cases, though, what, what the typical response is not to follow the weight, but to, but to actually create a, a posterior orientation or rotation in the pelvis. And so what she'll end up doing is probably doing that, where it will open a little bit. Do you know if she had a C-section or a normal delivery? I do not. I could ask, would that help? Well, it... it, it Again, so, so in this orientation, the, the, the canal that the baby has to pass through is narrower. And so, so sometimes that's one of the reasons why they have to go C-section is because there's just not enough room for the baby to come out. And so again, that might point in a certain direction and help you make a determination on what you're looking at. But if we turn it sideways, you can see that if I, if I reorient the ilium, so if I widen the ilium in response to the load, I actually reorient the hip socket. You see how it turns down and back a little bit? So that's a retroverted position of the hip socket. And so if the socket's pointing in that direction, it stands to reason that the, the more, more comfortable position uh, for that hip to rest in would be external rotation because it, the, that is moving the, the socket into that position. So that might be one of the reasons why you're seeing the, the, the patterning during a squat. And again, we're, we're, we're guessing right now, we're not really sure. But again, a possibility. Um, secondly, it, it may also limit motion uh, because of the change in concentric to eccentric orientation of the surrounding musculature. So as I, as I reorient this pelvis forward, I'm gonna pick up t- uh, muscle activity, concentric muscle activity in the front of the hip. I can get eccentric orientation in some of the musculature that's coming up that attaches to the, to the, to the ischial tuberosity, like hamstrings and such. Um, 
I can get a reorientation of glute max in the sagittal plane, and I can get reorientation of external rotators as well. So when she tries to sit down, those external rotators might be very concentrically oriented, and that's not going to let her squat. It's going to, going to let her sit comfortably. She's not going to be able to bend forward comfortably, or she'll, she'll have a limitation there, simply because of all this, this concentric muscle activity that would have to allow the pelvis to open and widen to allow her to bend and squat. So again, you're going to have to make a determination on that. Hip internal and external rotation measures will give you a clue. Um, and again, depending on how quickly she bounced back from being pregnant into activity, you'll see rib cage orientation. That may also be an influence. So if, if her rib cage widened during the pregnancy, that can alter the, the entire orientation where the whole pelvis, so I could have this, this appearance and an orientation forward, and that's a lot of muscle activity that's going to prevent uh, more hip flexion, especially in a squatting type of pattern. So, you know, in that regard, you're just going to have to select an alternative method, or you're going to have to determine what position she's in and then give her some form of activity that will reduce this concentric orientation of the musculature to allow it to lengthen and then allow her to sort of regain hip mobility. So if she doesn't have hip internal rotation, then you know she's got a lot of concentric activity in the external rotators. And so you want to promote something that will help reorient the pelvis posteriorly so that, so that as the ilium rotates posteriorly, it should allow some of that concentric orientation um, to, to reorient to eccentric, and then that should help restore some of that internal rotation in the hip. Now, you mentioned a hip thrust. <clears throat> Let me caution you just a little bit. If she is in, and I'm exaggerating this for effect, if she's in this orientation, so it's wide at, at the top and narrow at the bottom, and you start driving a hip thrust, you, you could be actually emphasizing that position. You could be making it harder for her to get out of that position because the concentric activity of a hip thrust duplicates the concentric activity of that position. So, so be aware of that, okay? Does that help you at all? Yes, it does. Do you, so that was, the hip thrust was to replace the deadlift, the kettlebell deadlift. And mm -hmm. I've been, I started with goblet squats and then I changed it to like a uh, cable reaching squats. Uh -huh. So she comes down and that looks a lot better. Right. Um, so I'm trying to figure out something to like get a hinge to practice with her. But um, do you have any suggestions for starting a hinge motion with her? So can she get on all fours? Yep. Okay, so you just start rocking her backwards from her all fours position, and then that te that teaches her the the pattern at the hip joint, and then you can start to uh, evolve the 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 rib cage and spine position that you would want for hinging as well. So as she learns to sit back, then you just decide how much hip motion you want, what orientation of the of the rib cage and spine, and then monitor, coach, cue and then just evolve it from there. Because once she can, she can do that, then you can start to bring her up, right? So you're just teaching her how to manage gravity just like her, her baby does, right? And so that's an easy way to, to take somebody that may not have an effective strategy in regards to control of, of her, her pelvis relative to her rib cage. So you teach her how to move that as a, as a relatively stable structure, which is typically what you want in a hinging motion, right? And, and then, um, like I said, bring her up to her feet from there. And then you can do an unweighted hinge, then you can progress her to some kind of lightly loaded deadlift patterning or, or however you want to work that. Thanks, Bill. Mm -hmm.